Okay, so we are going to continue our coverage over Acts Judgment Day. And we actually pick up with a set of one shots that go together perfectly. And they are known as Acts Judgment Day Avengers, Acts Judgment Day X Men, and Acts Judgment Day Eternals. All three one shots go perfectly together to get us ready for the final chapter of Acts Judgment Day, but also the Omega issue as well. And so we're going to start off with Axe Judgment Day Avengers number one. Now, when it comes to this one shot, the opening pages do a great job of reminding you, but also me, the readers, where we at currently when it comes to the overall story arc of Axe Judgment Day. And we actually pick up with a set of heroes going inside the Celestial to hopefully destroy it. Because let's not forget, Tony Stark did put a piece inside this Celestial to use as a failsafe. And if they are able to get rid of that piece, it should shut down this Celestial. And so right now you have our heroes just walking through the body of this being. Now, like most bodies, everybody has a immune system to protect their body from different kinds of viruses. And so when it comes to, well, the celestial, it also has an immune system, antibodies to help protect his body from viruses. And right now, the viruses in his body is our heroes, the Avengers, the X-Men, and also the Eternals. And so our heroes have no choice but to fight Fight against these antibodies if they want to survive but also get to that one piece to hopefully shut down this celestial and so we do get a nice section where you do have our heroes just fighting against the antibodies in this celestial now when it comes to our heroes they realize that if they die the entire world dies and so they have no choice here but to just keep pushing forward to survive, to protect the entire world. Now, this is also where we kind of learn what each of these one shots are going to be about, because let's look at the characters we have right now in front of us. You have Iron Man, Mr. Sinister, Jean Grey, Wolverine, Ajax, Makari, Cersei. All of these characters come from three different teams, the Avengers, X-Men, and the Eternals. And what is going to happen is that in each of these one shots, we're going to see one person get judged. And that person is going to represent their team they came from. And so with this one right here being the Axe Judgment Day Avengers one shot, well, that means Tony Stark is going to be the one who is going to be judged because he is the only Avenger here right now out of the entire group. Now you could say so is Cersei, but it's going to focus on Tony Stark. And honestly, in the entire Axe Judgment Day event, we have not seen him get judged yet. And so this is where we begin to see him getting judged by the Celestial. And the way it goes is that he does get attacked by some antibodies to the point where they do take over his body to begin the process of him being judged. And so when it comes to Tony Stark, what you actually have this Celestial do is use the different people that were affected by Tony Stark. The ones who had died thanks to him or somehow was affected by him in some different kind of way. Because when it comes to Tony Stark, he's always trying his best to make the world better. But the problem is though, every single time he tries, somebody ends up getting hurt or killed. Steve Rogers, Bruce Banner, Black Widow, the list goes on and on and on. Because this is a man who is trying to build a better future for the world. But he's trying to do that by using his Iron Man suit. And that is the problem right there trying to use machines as a way to cover up the flaws that the humans have. And with that being said, when it comes to machines, they're only as great as the creator is. And that is the huge problem because when it comes to Tony Stark, yes, he is a great creator. Yes, he is trying to build a better future. But the thing is, his machines are only as great as he is. And so with that being said, with a lot of people being affected by him, that means he's not as great as he believes he is. And this actually ties all the way back into the first two people to die in Tony Stark's life. 
and that would be Tony Stark's parents. And this makes a lot of sense. And the reason why, because they died when he was very young. They died in a car crash. And even after they had died right in front of him, he was hoping that their deaths was just somehow faked. That in reality, they're alive somewhere just hiding from him. But as years pass by, he's soon to realize that is not true. His parents had died, but the reason why they died was a car crash. They crashed into a tree, and this ties back into a machine, a car. The machine failed to break in time to save the lives of Tony Stark, and that is the huge problem right there. Machines are great only by how great their creator is. And so when it came to this celestial, yes, it is a very powerful cosmic being, but at the same time, it's also a machine as well that was created by Tony Stark or brought back to life thanks to Tony Stark. And right now, his great machine is failing and getting ready to destroy the entire world. And once again, this falls right back onto Tony Stark. Now, this is where you have Tony realize that, yes, he had done a lot of bad things. But at the same time, you have to let go of your mistakes and try to recover and then try to make better choices in the future. And that is very important right here, because when it comes to his test, that's the whole point to overcome your mistakes and try to make better choices for things down the road. And matter of fact, he gets this message from his father in this mindscape. And once he's able to get that message, he was able to break out out of the test the celestial was giving him to say i now understand and now me and the other heroes are going to work even harder to get to that one piece and shut you down i pass your test and if you try to give my friends here the same test i am going to help them also to pass the test to bring you down once and for all and so then we jump into Axe Judgment Day X-Men. And when it comes to the X-Men, you have to wonder, okay, who is going to get judged? Will it be Wolverine? Will it be Jean Grey? Or will it be Mr. Sinister? And we kind of find out it is Jean Grey. And honestly, it was a good toss up because all three characters do have the right to be judged for a lot of different things. For Wolverine and Jean Grey, there are two characters who are you know, very, very complicated characters. They have gone through so many struggles in their lives. And when it comes to Sinister, he's a very cruel person. And so it would make sense to go ahead and judge him as well. Now, Wolverine had technically already been judged by this point in the Axe Judgment Day event, but the other two have not. Either way, when it comes to this one shot, we do see our heroes just trying to make their way closer to the party to get to, to hopefully bring down this celestial except they do run into one obstacle where Jean Grey has to use her powers to keep the flames away from the others long enough so that they are able to fight against the antibodies but to also get to the other side of the room but this begins the process of Jean Grey now being judged as well and so when it comes to Jean Grey being judged, this is really a callback to all the different problems that Jean Grey had over the years in Marvel Comics. And what I mean by that, when it came to Jean Grey, when she was first made, she was your damsel in distress, just always in the way. Every single time you looked up, she had to be saved by somebody because she could not complete her task or her part of the job. And so Cyclops, Iceman, Angel, or Beast had to go out of their way to save her life. But then it jumps into the idea of her becoming the Phoenix because when Stanley made her, she was your damsel in distress. But when came to Chris Claremont, it was more of no, she can be a very powerful character. If she was, she became the Phoenix. The problem was she turned evil and then she had destroyed an entire planet. And that has always been a huge callback to a lot of different things when it came to Jean Grey. Like, hey, you may be a good guy now. You may be doing a lot of great things, but let's not forget the one thing you did, which was 
killing off an entire world. Now, with that being said, when it comes to the celestial, it's saying, how is it fair for you to judge me with me trying to get rid of this world because I believe that this world is a failure, but you just lost control of your newfound powers and wiped out an innocent world? How is that fair? And he's right. How is that fair? Now, luckily for Jean Grey, you have Sinister and Wolverine kind of jump in to free her from his test or to really give her more support when it comes to going through the test the Celestial is giving her right now when it comes to his judgment. And the reason why I say support, because when it comes to Jean Grey, she does use her powers as a way to reconnect her mind to the Celestial, to continue her test, to continue her judgment. But she does bring Wolverine and also Sinister along. Now, when it comes to Wolverine, we already saw his judgment. He got a thumbs up because he did not kill off the Hell Bride, and that was a very honorable thing to do. Now, when it comes to Sinister, we have not seen him get judged in this entire event. And so this is the moment where you have him get judged. And when he does get judged, it's more the idea that this is a guy who always tried to make a perfect clone of Jean Grey. And the reason why? Because how powerful she truly is. The problem is every single time he tries to do something as a way to recreate her, he has so many different kind of versions of her. Some sucked and some were great. But unfortunately, he could never make a perfect clone of her and it always bothered him so much and that is a callback to Madeline Pryor because let's not forget Madeline Pryor is the clone of Jean Grey he made her so that Cyclops and Madeline could have a child because he realized when it came to Cyclops and Jean Grey their two DNAs could bring in a very powerful mutant and that was Cable and so he made Madeline Pryor now Madeline is nowhere on the same level as Jean Grey but that's the thing it's sinister saying I made a clone and she was almost perfect but not perfect enough to be an exact clone of Jean Grey. Now you have the judge say I'm done with Sinister and sends him away. He also sends Wolverine away as well. Wolverine, not Wolverine. Wolverine away. And so this leaves Jean Grey alone with the Celestial in this mindscape. Now when it comes to Jean Grey, you had a Celestial tell Jean Grey it met her husband. That was Cyclops. And we already saw that Cyclops was able to get a thumbs up. Here's the catch. Cyclops did tell the Celestial, you are going to be very scared of my wife, Jean Grey. And when it comes to this powerful being, it says, yes, I am actually scared of you. And the reason why, because I feel like you and I are just alike, that you and I are very similar when it comes to powers. But at the same time, you and I are going to do the same thing. Well, you already have, but I'm going to do the same thing as you did, which is wipe out an entire planet. But I do feel like you are a very powerful being, but at the same time, you're somebody who is trying to forget your past mistakes thinking that if you're just able to do good down the road, it'll make up for all your past mistakes. But the problem is you will never make up for your past mistakes because you have killed so many people over the years as the Dark Phoenix. And the whole point of that test was to bring doubt into Jean Grey's mind because then you had a celestial basically say she failed the test because she is a killer because there's no way you can justify the idea of what you did because technically you did wipe out an entire planet of innocent people. Tell me how you think you have made up for that big, huge mistake. And so this is Wolverine trying to say, yes, you have made have killed off a whole planet full of innocent people, the, but that was your past. And take this advice from me. Your past is your past. What you can do right now is try to make a better future. And so you have Wolverine say, get back up, help us out here to build a better future for this world. And that is all Jean Grey needed to hear. And she is ready to go. And that wraps up this one shot right here. And so then we jump into Axe Judgment Day Eternals. And this is the one where the big question is, 
who is going to get judged here? Is it going to be Cersei? Is it going to be Ajax or Makari? Now, we already know that Cersei has already been judged, and so that only leaves the other two. Now, this is where you have Cersei explain to Tony Stark why she is here for, and the reason why? Because she does not trust Ajax and Makari at all, because most of the heroes in this group is down with the idea of killing off this god, except when it comes to Ajax and Makari, they don't want to do that. They want to reprogram the god to try to explain things to the god because they believe this god is just having a huge misunderstanding when it comes to the planet of Earth. And the reason why, because these two characters are technically priests when it comes to the Celestials. They were the only two people alongside a few others who had the ability to talk to Celestials, to understand their language and carry out their words to other Eternals. But there was a point where you had a Celestials just stop coming to Earth, just stop talking to Ajax and Makari. And because of that, they felt like, you know what? Maybe we needed a new God to come to Earth to see what we have done and then hopefully rebuild that connection. Now, of course, that idea failed completely. And so when it comes to Cersei, she's saying, I don't trust them. I feel like they believe this God could still be fixed in some kind of way. Now, when it comes to Tony Stark, he says, hey, Cersei, if you were judged and you failed, why did you fail? As a matter of fact, that is a good question for Tony Stark to ask. Why did Cersei fail? What did she do to fail her judgment? And it all comes back to what she did when it came to Jack of Hearts and Icarus. Because let's not forget, her eternal group found out the dark secret about the Eternals. That every single time they die, a human dies to bring them back to life. And so when it came to Icarus, he wanted to tell the entire world this dark secret. But when it came to Cersei, she felt like that would be a bad idea. It would only lead to more issues down the road when it came to the humans and the Eternals. And so she used Jack of Hearts as a way to kind of scare Icarus to not tell anybody at all. Because if he did, uh, Jack of Hearts would kill off people who were humans that were somewhat close to Icarus. She scared him to basically follow her orders. And so because of that, she failed her judgment. And so then we jump into Ajax getting judged. Now, when it comes to Ajax getting judged, it's really more about the idea that earlier we saw the Celestial begin to judge her. But unfortunately, it stopped mid-judgment. And the reason why, because it felt like it would be a better time down the road to judge her. And that moment is here and now. Now, when it comes to her judgment, it's really more about the idea of her having too much faith. And what I mean by that, she still believes that this God is just acting under the idea of a misunderstanding. That if they are able to talk to this God before trying to kill it, maybe it'll have a better idea of how this world truly works. And so that's her problem. She has too much faith. And you had a celestial try to show her this is your biggest problem. You are sacrificing so many lives out there in the world to just prove this one simple thing that you believe that I am able to change or you are able to change me. And with your faith, it is going to lead into so many more problems for you and the rest of the world. And so that is why she does get a thumbs down because her faith is basically sacrificing the entire world, all because she still wants to have the ability to believe that Celestials are good and she wants to rebuild the bond between the Eternals and the Celestials because she wants to be able to communicate with the Celestials. And that is her huge problem. And so the book ends on that note with her saying, hey guys, I know the way and the reason why, because I have faith and my faith is going to lead us to victory. And so this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. But guys, I'll see y'all next time. Later.